the music pad feature of Song Surgeon, which I have open on my screen right here, is used to create standard music notation or sheet music. And that is the topic of this training video, so let's go ahead and get right to it. The first step is to understand the layout of the work area. Think of this work area as a sheet of paper on your computer on which you will write notes, rests, timing, sharps, flats, staffs. The paper has a margin, as you can see. There is the external margin here, which would be the edge of the paper, and the internal margin, and that is simply a printer margin. If you ever plan to print what it is that you're going to be creating and storing in MusicPad, you should make certain that you stay within this gray print boundaries line. Also note, at the bottom of this page of paper, there is a facility to add additional sheets of paper. And, of course, we can add an unlimited number of sheets of paper. Now that you have a basic understanding of the work area, the first step is to create a staff. And you do this by going up to the staff button, which is this second button here, and then moving your mouse, after you click it, down to the main work area. And once you've moved it to the work area, you left click and you drag it and as you drag it across you'll see that the staff expands and then when you get to the other side of the page or the other margin you click again and it places it on the page. Notice the green handles on the staff. When these are showing you can grab the staff and move it up and down or you can delete it. And I'm gonna bring it back by hitting the reset button here. Please also note that as you create a staff, if you drag downward at the same time, you'll create a double staff. This is frequently used in situations where you're going to have two different clefts. Also note one last thing, and that is that when you create staffs, you can certainly create them one at a time like this, and then populate the staff, and then create a second one, just like you did the first one and create each of them one at a time or you can create multiple staffs immediately if you believe you're going to be using many of these so you don't have to go back every so often and do that. That choice is clearly up to you. Your next step would be to populate this staff. If you're following standard convention you would probably insert a cleft next and you simply go to the cleft button, select the cleft that you want, drag it down to the staff and when you locate it where you would like it on the staff you left click to place it there. You might then select a time signature. Again, simply go to the button, select the time signature, move it to the location you'd like to place it on the staff, left click, and you've placed it on the staff. You would do the same for flats and sharps, which you can find here. You might also want to insert a tempo, and if you'd like a numerical tempo, you would use this simple text tool, which you can get by simply clicking here, typing in something like T, just make it a capital T equals 120. Change the font size to 10 and then dragging it up and placing it wherever you'd like it. Once you have your basic setup for the song you would begin to write or create the music by placing the appropriate notes and rests on the page. To do that simply go to the note that you are looking for, drag it over to the staff, and when you get it to the location like it, left click and you place it on the staff. If you'd like to place the same item on the staff multiple times, you can speed this process by clicking the space bar. And every time I click the space bar, it essentially inserts that same quarter note that I had previously selected. The way the spacebar works in this quick insert method is that whatever the last selected item is from the toolbar that you select, once you've placed it on the staff, if you click the spacebar again, it basically grabs it for you and allows you to place it again without having to go back to the toolbar and select that note again. Another thing that you may want to do is to flip the orientation of a note by 180 degrees. In other words, rather than having the tails pointing upward, as these are, you may want to have the tail pointing downward. To do this, after you have selected a note with your left mouse button and you're dragging it, right click. And as you right click, you'll see that the orientation flips and now that the tail of the note is pointing downward. As you're continuing to hold your right mouse button, reposition the note wherever you'd like it on the staff, 
and then left click and let go with both mouse buttons and now you've placed it on the staff and the orientation of the tail of the note is pointing downward. Again, let's do that one more time. Left click the button, drag. As we're dragging with neither mouse button held down, right click. The orientation flips. Now I'm moving the note around or relocating it with only my right mouse button continuing to be held down when I get it where I'd like it. I left click while holding the right mouse button down and then I let go of both and now they're both placed on the staff. One other thing of course that you're going to want to do in addition to placing notes is to place rests and you may not see any rests in these toolbars but they're there and the way you see them is that you simply click the or hold down the control button and when you do that you'll see that all the notes have now been converted to rests. So there are the notes and there are the corresponding rests. So this was a whole note, now it's a whole rest. This is a quarter note, it's a quarter note rest. So you work this the same way to place the rests on the staff and that is while you are holding the control key down, select the rest that you'd like, drag it down, and then left click with your mouse to place it. Click the next one, drag it down, left click with your mouse to place it. So that's how you find the rests in the toolbars and that's how you place them and essentially you place them exactly the same way that you did the notes. The N2 notes on this toolbar work somewhat differently and therefore we need to talk about them separately. They are a triplet and a tie. If you click on one of them <clears throat> and drag it down to the staff you'll see the notation for the triplet in this particular case. Once I click on it it appears to disappear but it does not it reappears as I drag it and as I drag it to resize it I then left click a second time and that places the sized version on the staff. If I want to resize it I simply grab a hold of one of the ends and I drag it back and it will resize and then I let go of it again. So one of the features about this is that it can be resized. The second feature is that sometimes you would like a triplet notation like that to be pointing downward but there are other times that you might want that triplet notation to be pointing upward. So there are two ways to do this. Number one, you can simply grab the right end and sort of swing it around and make it the left end. Or you can do that the same way by simply dragging it from right to left and it repositions it from bottom to top or top to bottom. So here again we have the triplet pointing down. If we want to change the orientation so the triplet points up, I can grab the left side, drag it to the right side, and when I do that, it changes and the orientation of the triplet is now that it points up. So that's how the triplet works and the tie works very similarly. We click it, we bring it down. You can see first of all that it appears to disappear. I drag it, there it is. I left click again and now I've set the desired length of it and that length can be resized by either grabbing hold of the left side or the right side and resizing it either in or out and I can then change the size or the scope of of the area that it encompasses. And similarly if I want this tie feature to point down like it is now I use it like that. If I would like to reposition it so it's pointing upward, I grab a hold of it, I flip it around, I grab it again, and now I have a tie that's pointing upward. So these two notes work very much the same way in terms of the fact that they are stretchable or resizable and the fact that they can be either pointing upward or downward and you can flip that orientation around. There's one other thing I'd like to talk about in a little more detail. We briefly touched on it earlier, but we need to talk about it in a little greater detail so you can better understand the functionality of it. And that is this simple text editor here that is found in the T button. If you click on it again, we open this. I'd like to show you some of the other features that are in here. First of all, as we have mentioned, you simply type the text in down here and you can see that I'm just entering text at random from my keyboard. You can bold it, make it italics, underline it, you can change the color of it. You can do all of these things. In addition, uh, some pretty cool things that you can do with it is to change the angle. For instance, it would normally 
be created right now as this is set up as normal horizontal text from left to right. But if you wanted, say, to have this text go from top to bottom, we could change the angle of this from 0 to 270, and you'll see the orientation now. The orientation is now from top to bottom. So what I mean by that, I'm going to right click it to edit it, is that this S that was on the left is now on the top. This A, which was clear on the right, is now on the bottom. If you wanted to flip the text around the other way, you would change this to what? That's correct, 90. We change it to 90, and now we've flipped it around the other way. You can use this to do a number of unique things uh, that you can't do with any other tool on the toolbar, so keep that in mind. One other thing you should note, in the drop-down list of fonts, you will see a font called Music Symbols. And if you select this font, which I have, though you may be typing normal alphanumeric text, as you can see I am right here, when you actually place this on the timeline, you'll see that what you have are music symbols. We have provided you this music font so you can have access to some additional music symbols beyond the basic ones found in MusicPad. So please keep this in mind because as you're looking for more obscure music symbols rather than the basic ones that we have in MusicPad, this will allow you to be able to easily create them and place them within the work area. So that's going to conclude this video tutorial on creating standard or conventional music notation using MusicPad. Thank you.